$1.7 million Ghana CDs defamation suit against Media House and three others with some statements that were made with regards to him being alleged to have also used uh, the Falcon, which is the official, um, you know, private jet for the presidency. And he has filed a lawsuit against them because he says, I never used it. Now, moving on also, 12.53 Ghana City's minimum wage takes effect today. Committee recommends that it should be tax exempt, but Ghanaians are saying that is not enough. A 6% increase is not enough because life has even become more difficult and uh, government can do better. Transport fares up by 13% from Saturday and police officer kills tutor 31 in an accident at Ghana National College and also fight for justice for June 3 disaster victims on course one Ghana movement and they are saying that they are representing a large number of them and um, yes uh, they are fighting for their cause. Republic Press says Ayine in fresh trouble dragged to uh, the General Legal Council over disparaging comments against the Supreme Court and we'll discuss that because there are concerns that lawyers are being uh, prevented from speaking on issues with regards to the judiciary and so their rights are being curtailed but there's also another school of thoughts that says that that is not exactly the point it's more about the language used and how your message is couched what do you make of it we'll get into that shortly three arrested in connection uh, with murder of 12 year old used for rituals and man 39 bitten by a snake from the sky Okay, trader jailed six years over car fraud and Akufuado pays last respect as Sir John goes home. And yesterday he spoke very highly of him and says that Sir John is one of his most loyal um, friends as well. And he encouraged him at a time when many people said, um, you know, he was not going to be president and they weren't sure if they could uh, still trust him uh, to bring the NPP into power. He said Sir John assured him that he would become president and today he is president. And so uh, the NPP has lost a great man in Ghana as well. Chimota School welcomes Rasta students at last. We're expecting uh, Magai, Ras Magai, to also get into, Tyron Magai actually, that's his name, to get into school today. He's expected to be in school this morning. We'll wait and see what happens with that. But ABC News says Kofi Adams fined 40,000 Ghana cities for uh, fleeing ABC News case. And Akufu Adobamia, others bid farewell to Sir John. Daily minimum wage increase to 12.53 Ghana cities, effective today, June 4. Um, Daily Guide, Nana's brother sues for 10 million Ghana cities defamation. And that's a photo of him, Edward Akufu Ado, a.k.a. Bamti. And Opuni. Uh, chases judge files for stay. UK Home Secretary visits Ghana and hundreds. Monse John laid to rest. Okay. Um, Daily Guide venture into entrepreneurship. According to the finance minister, he is speaking to the youth. And six years after completion, Artisan Center stands idle, structure deteriorates. And there's a photo of one of the shed seven as a warehouse for some unidentified individuals. And the restroom built for the use of the artisan has also been uh, totally deteriorated and nine perished in flooded mining pits at Moabuk and hundreds trooped to Sakura Wunu for Sir John's funeral. The custodian says Akufuado Jr. sues class media Bobier and co for 10 million Ghana cities. Nana eulogizes Sir John as true MPP loyalist and let's empower MMDAs to be resourced according to Mr. O.B. Anmoa and uh, BF, BNFT Business and Financial Times. Government silence and healthy for investor community according to ASA. Policy rate cut may boost government's domestic financing and data bank research as T-bills may attract investors. And it says MTN talks up big things for Ambition 2025. And finally, to the Ghanaian Times, which is a story that we're going to be discussing this morning. Danger looms in Ketu South as tidal waves close in on Aplao Keta Road. And this happened on Wednesday where a number of homes, um, you know, have been washed away and also uh, a number of people have lost their livelihoods and still not much has been done. We're told that this morning, NADMO is on its way to provide some relief to the people in the community. And our colleague Armstrong will bring us all the details on that. Uh, minimum wage increase takes effect today at Google. Paramount Chief Rally Supports for one constituency, one astroturf, as Ghana Gas supports construction in Agugu. Good morning to um, 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 Robert Coleman. I was trying to remember your name so I get it right. Good morning to you. He's very good with the construction of astroturfs in the country as well. Madame Gomashi interacting with some of the displaced persons in 
K2 South. And I'll read that story so we can discuss it. But joining us this morning, we have Mr. Richard Asante Yabwa. He's government spokesperson on infrastructure. He's joining us via Zoom. We're told that he was at the funeral of Sir John yesterday and so could not make it back to Accra to join us in the studios. But regardless, we have him online. Good morning, uh, Richard, and I hope you're well. Good morning, my dear. I'm doing fabulous. All right. Thank you for joining us this morning. How was it yesterday? It must have been a very sad moment for uh, many NPP loyalists and Ghanaians in general, and of course, people in his community. It was quite a solemn occasion. Mm. He's contributed immensely to the forward march of the MPP. And having been our general secretary, I think that his demeanor, the way he conducted himself and his affairs, and the fact that he's somebody who conducts, cuts across the various political divide, and uh, his, his human person gave us an impression that indeed Ghana has lost such a great person. Mm. And I, I, I was touched by uh, the number of individuals from the various political parties and persuasions who were there to bid farewell to uh, the general secretary, the former general secretary of the New Patriotic Party and the mm. CEO of the Forestry Commission. Well, I think that he's, he's lived a, 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 a very good life. Yeah. And we pray that he will be kept in the bosom of the Lord. Mm, indeed. Amen. May his soul be preserved indeed. And also joining us in the studio is Mr. Eric Edem Agbana. I'm just finding out this morning that you actually called <laughs> Eric, you know. He's a deputy <laughs> national youth organizer for the NDC. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you, Ben. I haven't Good seen to you, see you. Yes, in a yes, while. Yes, yes, Everything yes. okay? Uh, by his grace. Uh, yeah. But you may be aware, just as uh, many young people and all Ghanaians are complaining, that the system is, is quite hard. But, is. But, but by the grace of God, we are, we are fine. We will survive. Yeah, we pray that the government is able to fix the country so, mm. that, so that we can all survive. We hope so. But let me read the story on the issue with K2 South and, uh, South and how tidal waves uh, are closing in on the Aflao Keta Road. Now, it says that calamity looms over the K2 South municipality as the ravaging sea, which has already buried 20 houses in three communities, is just about 10 meters away from the Aflao Keta um, uh, border. And if the sea finally cuts through the road installation, such as electricity poles and buildings will definitely be carried away, uh, according to investigations. And at least 1,000 people from Salakope, Amutinu and Agaveji have been displaced since Wednesday night when the sea again invaded the communities with brutal force. For now, the displaced persons are still looking for space to squat at Agbozume and Jetagba with no immediate prospects for relief. But at least as of this morning, we're told that Nadmo is on its way to the constituency and they're going to provide some relief for these displaced persons. But the MP uh, for K2 South, Madame Jifa Ablakomashi, who spoke yesterday after visiting the disaster scenes and providing food and other relief items to the people, described the situation as devastating. And she said that the people who were mostly cross-border traders had already been deprived of their livelihood since the closure of the border in March last year. And I remember about two weeks ago, we had an extensive conversation with her on this and um you know nancy one of our colleagues as well also covered the real situation on the ground at the various borders and it was heartbreaking now this has also happened and that means that people have already lost too much and they have to grapple with losing their homes and the rest of their livelihood as well this present predicament madame gomashi said had now left them in a state of grave despair the lawmaker highlighted the need to relocate the people to a higher ground immediately saying that no excuse was good enough for not responding to the problem right away. But the Volta Regional Minister, Dr. Archibald Yao Lecha, uh, gave some assurance that hope was in sight for the displaced persons. And he says that joint and frantic efforts by the Regional Coordinating Council, Ministry of Works and Housing, Ghana Highway Authority, and NADMO and EPA were vigorously underway to address the problem head on. You'd remember um, that sometime in 2019, about 55 homes were destroyed. Um, you know, a similar raid occurred, and then also 100 houses in April this year were displaced and uh, were destroyed, and about 800 people also were displaced. So the question is, what have we learned from this? Because there was supposed to have been a report on what needs to be done. I remember that there were some people who also agitated, and they needed, um, you know, the, the problem to be fixed immediately. And we're experiencing this again. It's been a number of days, and we're now being told that government is now sending reliefs to the people. Adam, what is your thought on this? Well, Bella, good morning to you once again and to our cherished uh, viewers across the world. Today is June 4th, mm. so um, we 
in the NDC and all those who believe in the spirit of the revolution. It's a very memorable day for us and uh, today is the very first June 4th that we are celebrating without our founder, the founder, leader yeah. of the revolution. So I want to use your platform to pray for his soul that mm. uh, may he rest in peace. And for we the young ones who are now the torchbearers, mm -hmm. may we be able to uh, lead with integrity and ensure that we live by the values and the principles of, 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 of integrity, accountability, and transparency mm. so that Ghana will see the rightful leadership that she deserves. Uh, secondly, also on Sir John, mm. I believe that he was a good man. I have met him a couple of times uh, before he died. He was full of life, very lively. Mm. He is not one of those politicians that when you meet at programs or functions like funerals or social events, uh, you would feel that tense polarization. He yeah. was fond of making jokes out of every situation and all of that. May he so rest in peace. Uh, I, I wish that I was at his funeral, but uh, some other engagements uh, prevented us from going. However, I've watched pictures and videos of how the funeral was organized. And I must say that um, I'm very, very disappointed. Mm. Disappointed because a few weeks or months ago, leaders of the Christ Embassy Church were, were uh, as we speak, they are currently facing prosecution yeah. because they, according to the the, the law enforcement agencies, they organized an event that they did not comply with the COVID-19 protocols. But as we speak, if you watch the pictures and videos from Sir John's funeral, it appears as though there are two different types of laws guiding this country. That any time it has to do with politicians or has to do with the governing political party, they can disregard whatever. I mean, it's, Not it's just so governing, sad. But no, I mean, but your party is also guilty. No, but election is just a few months away. That, so, from, so from you see, what, what happened was that prior to the elections, uh -huh. the government allowed the uh, relaxation of the laws. After the elections, we started blaming the churches and Christians for uh, the surge in the numbers. Then we started clamping down on churches and other organizations. Then you have an opportunity to organize a funeral. I remember the funeral of uh, our founder. They observed strictly the protocol. So it yeah. was possible to observe the protocols in the organization of Sir John's funeral. But mm. what I saw yesterday was very, very bad, very terrible. And I think that the government should, 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 should advise itself that, you see, we should not be seen as political leaders to be applying different rules to the citizens. That when a church is seen doing this thing, it is wrong. Then we go we won't want to persecute them but when when it is it has to do with politicians or government then it is okay i think that even say john himself uh, will not be happy seeing how mm. president akufado and his government have blatantly mm. disregarded the covid 19 protocols in the organization of his funerals especially as we are told we are told that he died out of COVID or something like that so i think that the government should be ashamed for how they led that particular uh, organization okay. without complying with the with the with, with the COVID nineteen protocols. Before back you move the on, issue, then to yes. the case, let me let him at least to be fair. Let me let him respond to that, and then I can come back to you to respond to the K two South uh, conversation. Richard, uh, I, what do you I, say I, to I, this? I, I think uh, sometimes we need to look at issues and address matters as and when they come, and look at the issues in a peculiar circumstance. Sir John's funeral, you would say, was organized and open, even the church service for which the president attended. The moment the president was there, whatever happened was being controlled because a lot of people, the place was barricaded and just a few people were allowed entry into where the president and some of the family members of Sir John had to participate in the whole exercise. Right after was the, uh, the president left because he came for the, uh, the church service and other individuals came in. People were coming. It's like the normal account from one setting. People come in, they do their usual thing, and they walk away. We should also understand that when it comes to Sejon and Sejon Funra and the, uh, the Christ Embassy Church issue, you are looking at an event that was organized in an enclosed area, the dome, mm. with hundreds of uh, people. Some of them were literally not even in nose masks air condition blowing and all that. 
is a fertile ground for the, 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 the spread of COVID. You are also seeing a sejourn a funeral, which was organized under the sun and open space. Where people, in terms of the arrangement of the chairs and everything, you saw that protocols were literally taken into consideration. So I do not know the kind of pictures that he's seen, because I was at the event. I did not see some of the things that he, 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 he talked about. It is possible that something might have happened somewhere that was captured and I did not see. But from what I saw, mm -hmm. I'm coming, from what I saw, I did not see, and it's possible, like I'm saying, it's possible that there will be certain infractions at one point or the other, which I might not have seen. But for what I saw as an individual who was there and participated in the whole exercise, saw some of the members of the NDC, the likes of Otukobunono and certain members of the NDC who came to represent his party, all participating in the exercise. I'm not sure I saw the time they came in that they were they abused the COVID protocol. I did not see Otokono do anything that abused or the NDC leadership who came in uh, did anything that undermined the COVID protocols and the laws. So for me, what I'll say is that, I mean, we cannot compare these two events. It's like comparing apples to uh, oranges, Richard, which is really unfair. But, but, but that's quite and unfair to that, say because your government is in power. You are the one who are making the laws. You are the ones making the laws. And so you should... Uh, if anything at all, abide by the laws. And if you're saying an open space, then why was the police going ahead and arresting people on the streets in open space without their nose mask? Be because, um, you know, then you'd I'm, assume, I'm you that, me, you'd assume that because it's an open space, then they should not necessarily adhere to the COVID-19 protocols. Oh, no, no, I, I, I did not say that. I'm, no, saying I'm just saying saw, that if you're saying, saying that the church service was indoors and people were not in their mask and it was an enclosed space and so it's a fertile ground, for the spread. Then the other side of the argument would be that there were people on the streets, open space, who were not in their nose mask, and they were arrested by the police and fined because they weren't wearing their nose mask. That's open space. But, 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 we could argue that, I've well, already, it's not necessarily already, a fetal I've ground already for spread. I've spoken about the point that, you see, my argument had to, uh, had to do with the fact that the people that I saw, mm. I saw a good, uh, like, a good number of people in nose mask. There were one or two that you could see from afar or at this time who were standing somewhere alone, possibly on phone and all that, who were not on nose mask. But the people that I saw who were at the uh, funeral grounds literally had face masks on. And I'm saying that it's like this thing that we are talking about and the Christ embassy situation. I was giving a, a classical example of the Christ embassy situation where we believe that, or everybody knows that it was an enclosed area with air conditions on, people singing and dancing and all kinds of activities happening. I think the, what I must seek to do is to protect these people mm. from getting COVID. That is government's duty. Mm. Government is not in there to punish either a church or any individual. Now, when you come to Sir John's funeral situation, let's remember that it's not, it wasn't a, a, an event organized by government. It's a family funeral, and MPP being one of the biggest families of Sir John, Mm -hmm. Equally uh, participated in the whole exercise. But the president so was going to be there. Look like, uh, and remember that former president Rawlings' funeral was a state barrier conducted by the state. So then it's okay to adhere to the as protocols. Who can even come there? Sir John funeral, you cannot do the same thing. Why? To determine, uh, you can determine who and who was not a national fun a barrier. It was not a state funeral. So, so it's not a state what funeral. you're saying so then that, is, is that, that people no, I'm saying, I'm cannot coming. be controlled once it's not a state I'm saying that the people were controlled. And I gave you, I gave you an a, evidence of a situation where the place was barricaded and the number of people were coming in and going out were controlled. Okay. And I say that I wasn't there to the end of the entire exercise. Okay. I was there, played my part, left the scene, others came in. So I do not know what I, whatever video he, he, he talks of. But I'm saying the moment that I was there, the event that I participated in, I did not see the kind of impression and the picture my, my, my younger brother, Adam, who wants to be a bad boy this morning, was trying to create. <laughs> 
And that is what I'm okay. telling you. Okay. Okay. That we All cannot right. do politics with everything. I thought that he spoke well about the event, said that it's on a solemn occasion, and there's a nice person that people want to. And I thought that the, 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 whole, the whole exercise went. It, it was a beautiful exercise. Seeing NDC people clawed in their, their funeral in Nigeria, participating in the event, I was quite touched. But I okay. thought that there are certain moments that we need to unite as a country mm. over a certain cause and, and move forward. I'm, I'm saying that I did not see anything that anybody would want to profit politically from. You cannot make political capital out of a funeral like this, where all of us is, is, are still Is that what's really happening? Well, this is COVID. I mean, so he, he should be concerned so I'm saying for that the, the in paid, general. The, the gentleman was in there, okay. but he says that he saw a picture, <laughs> and he believed those pictures <laughs> to have come from Sir John's <laughs> funeral. And I'm saying that I was there. Okay. I witnessed. I saw okay. a different thing altogether. Yeah. I All think right. Otokono came in with people kissing and hanging on the on, on the event floor. For him to say that COVID protocols were thrown to the dogs. And that is what I want him to understand. That I mean he should not stretch things. It's easy. Right. Come on. No worries, right, Richard. So. Elections have been won. <laughs> totally Turn understood. Down on the political. All right. Yeah. All right, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. I'd want us to move on yes. from, from this point and talk about K2 South and what's happening. That's also a very um, yeah, critical yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I was going to come to you. Adam, yes, yes. He says so, you are being uh, a bad boy. Please uh, behave. Uh, my, my, my brother, Richard, <laughs> uh, he knows. But I mean, descending Ghanaians are seeing the videos and pictures all over social media. But not to belabor the point, straight to the K2 South issue. I think mm. that I have been following the stories in uh, Agaveji mm -hmm. uh, because the member of parliament for K2 South is a very good friend of mine and yeah. i see how passionate she is about what is happening two things i think that we it is important for us as a country to have a system okay mm -hmm. that guarantees the continuation of government projects because lives properties are at stake as we speak in 2016 mm -hmm. president john Dramani mahama in the ndc started some sea defense projects in the area. Mm -hmm. The project came to a halt because the NDC lost power. From 2017, they experienced a similar thing. I recall that in 2017, when the tidal wave ravaged homes, yeah. destroyed homes, lives and properties were at risk, the Honorable Atachi at the time visited the area mm. with the MC and the members of parliament from Volta, and they were all there. From that time, one would have expected that something would, some actions would have uh, commenced, I mean, to continue the project that we started. But yeah. they have abandoned the project. In 2019, it happened. Mm -hmm. 2020, even in April, it happened. Mm -hmm. And it appears as though we are becoming a country where when there are problems, you see cameras moving there, you see NADMO moving and provide some relief, and after a while after days or weeks, we abandon the people mm -hmm. waiting for the next disaster to happen. We certainly cannot develop our country this way. It is sad. I listened to some of the residents. They actually embarked on a demonstration yeah. about three days ago because mm -hmm. the more people are feeling, so these are people who are already devastated by the fact that from 2020, the borders have been have closed. Been yeah. These people are traders. Mm -hmm. They are cross-border traders. And so no incomes. And the little how they are even managing to survive is a story for the gods. Only for a natural disaster like this to happen mm -hmm. again, simply because of the recklessness of government. Because if government were not reckless, they would have continued the sea defense project. Yeah. Again, this thing happened on the 29th of May. Tomorrow will be exactly a week. And we are now hearing that NADMO is moving to the place today. Mm -hmm. What is the essence of disaster management? It is to respond to emergencies. So it happened last week, Saturday. The people have been crying out for help, embarked on demonstration. They are crying that they don't even have food to eat. It took the intervention of the member of parliament, who it is not her duty, but she had to go spend her own resources to provide some relief items for these people. And yet we have NADMO. Mm. Budgetary allocations have been made to NADMO. NADMO is supposed to have some of these relief items in their warehouse to respond to emergencies of this nature. Is this how we respond to emergency in any other part of the country? And they are now moving to the site. So what is happening in Agaveji and other coastal areas in Ketu South is really, really sad. And I think that the member of parliament made a very important point that no excuse is good enough mm. for the people. These are Ghanaians. They pay taxes. They deserve to be treated equally as anybody else. 
They are in this condition for over a week now, and Nadbo is now going to respond. So what is the essence of disaster management if it cannot be to respond in an emergency situation like this? I think that it is a very sad situation, and government must pay some attention to the people in Ketu South with regards to this. And I want to admonish the government that let us not get to the point where another tidal wave will come and that we are not even expecting that move to come. Mm -hmm. Continue with the sea defense project that the NDC started in 2016. When you complete the project, then you prevent the reoccurrence of this particular uh, problem. And yeah. the people are even complaining that instead of government paying attention to the sea defense project, government is rather paying attention to the relocation plan. Now, you are building a relocation site. Meanwhile, there is an emergency. So the exigencies of the moment demands that you solve the problem at hand. So at least complete the sea defense project. And if you think that in the future, tidal wave will still disturb the people, then you work on the relocation site. How do you work on a relocation site when tidal wave is currently affecting the people? We is that not told. supposed to move the people out so that they can move, have enough space so it is, to... It is, it is to move the people out. Mm -hmm. But how long have we been on this project? And how long would the relocation site be, uh, take to, com uh, to be completed? Now you have the people in the middle of a problem. They are homeless. Over 700 people. Imagine. Mm -hmm. No homes. No food to eat. But for the intervention of the member of parliament for a week, many of them, there are children among them, there are pregnant women among them, they are the aged among them. So these people need some immediate intervention. And that is why government is supposed to respond to it as an emergency and not the lackadaisical attitude that that government so far has shown to the people of Agaveji and the other coastal areas in Ketu South. This should be a wake-up call. There are other areas, other coastal areas in this country that this tidal wave continuously disturbs the people. Mm -hmm. What will it cause government of Ghana to complete all these sea defense projects and ensure that the people are relocated? Well, to be fair, the House Minister says they have engaged the Ministry of Finance to approve uh, the finances for the second phase of the Blekusu Coastal Projection, uh, protection of the project. And so, you see, if you go back to 2017, when it happened and mm -hmm. when... The Honorable Atachia was there mm. and, and, and read the things that he said. Similar things, empty mm. rhetorics. So when there is a problem, we have engaged so so and so, we have engaged the stakeholders in this month, in the next two years, in the next year, we are expected to complete these projects and all of that. And the problem keeps recurring. Mm. The people of Agaveji and the other coastal areas in Ketu South, this is not the first time that they have been faced with this challenge. So how long should the people wait for all these engagements to actually translate into a solution mm -hmm. for them? So mm. that is where the problem is. Not just the empty talks. Government must demonstrate that really some work is taking place. And that can only be seen when we see the fiscal project on the ground. All right. Let me bring Richard in. Richard, and I'm asking you this because, uh, I mean, the House Ministry has been working in tandem with, um, you know, NADMO and a few other EP and all of that. With NADMO especially, now their job description does not only come in when there's a disaster. In actual fact, they are supposed to identify disaster-prone areas. And they're supposed to put in place measures to avert any form of disaster in these areas and not wait till it, ha it has happened before they provide relief services to people who have been affected by whatever disaster may occur at one point in time or the other. And so if all these uh, agencies have been working together to find a solution to this problem, then I don't think that we should have been waiting till this point for it to happen again, especially because it happened in April and many houses were lost, people were displaced, and now we've had to wake a, wait a whole week and we're being told that NADMO is now sending relief items to them. So does it mean that people have not been doing their jobs as they should to protect the lives and homes of these people who have been affected? Uh, thank you very much. I would want to uh, 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 commensurate with those who have to go through this because they are citizens of this republic. And all of us owe them a duty of care and also share with them in their pains and their frustration in moments like this. But I do equally believe that as citizens, we own a personal uh, uh, care to ourselves and due to ourselves to be responsible for our own lives before we extend an, a, a, a hand to any government or any institution to come through for us. Particularly when you are building a house around a waterway area or you have a property or facility around area where you think that your personal life can be endangered 
I think that the first thing that you need to do is to take up the responsibility and make sure that you take good care of yourself by relocating without even anybody coming to tell you. Mm. That is the first point that we need to understand. There are moments that state institutions will come in. Sometimes it becomes even a fighting issue. Sometimes people use that one to even blackmail political actors and politicians. Like, oh, don't don't trade on the street. Don't do business here. Don't build on a waterway. Don't build here closer to the beach. Your, your life can be endangered and all that. It becomes an issue. And I know that there have been successive governments that tried in terms of even relocating people at various beaches closer to where we do believe that there's a possibility of a, a wave like this coming in to destroy homes and also destroy lives and properties. Mm. So these things have happened. We know that in certain instances, people take on her strong attitude or recalcitrant attitude, thinking that they can do that to prevent the state institution from doing that. I'm not saying that that's what has happened in this scenario. Because I'm not really abreast with all the full facts as far as this particular issue is concerned. But what I know in terms of this issue had to do with the fact that uh, uh, the NDC initiated a project. They did not even pay for it. The government came to continue with and completed the project. Now, the second phase is supposed to start. That is where the funding is being sourced and all that. So for anybody to say that what the NDC started, the government abandoned it. And that's not true. The first phase has been, have been completed. I mean, if my brother talks like this. That is where to invite certain people to make comments like, NDC had the opportunity of being in power for eight years. If indeed, the day they came to power, if they have raised funding and done everything to curb this, within the eight years, they would have solved that entire stretch. But I know that's not how it's done. But we do believe that governance is in continuum. And every government comes in incrementally as on to whatever has been done. So the MPP came in, saw what is being done, paid for it, continued with the project. So there's nothing like government has abandoned it. The second point about the uh, 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 NABGO and my brother desire to and penchant to try and, uh, and speak ill of state institutions. Sometimes let's, let's appreciate them under the limited constraints where they operate. I tell you, there's NABGO in every constituency. There are district NABGO coordinators, there are regional NABGO coordinators. Whatever any event happened within any district, the first point of call would be the district NABMO coordinators, who are mm -hmm. also indigents. And they feel for the people. They are the people. They are one of them who are usually appointed to uh, uh, manage such uh, 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 office within the constituency or the district. Mm -hmm. They have been there. Whatever resources that they have. Okay, uh, a bit of a challenge there. I would have loved to ask Richard. I mean, if he says that... Let's try to for the Richard. national to come. Okay, Richard, if you're saying the that they had to contact the district offices of NADMO, within this week when the incident occurred, what have they been able to do? Were they able to provide some relief to the residents in that area at all? What exactly did they provide? Tell us. I understand that uh, uh, the first day... The, the, the morning after the incident, the team went there, assessed the situation, sent their report to the regional, which was subsequently forwarded to the national. They went there with whatever limited resources, food items, clothing and other things, buses and other things that they had at their disposal to them. Obviously, the member of parliament who also owed the people some level of care also went there to assist. We've seen other NGOs who have been there to assist. Mm -hmm. Their churches and other a, a religious institution that have obviously gone there to support. And you but have details your, of all these people who have supported because the people in the area are saying that, that they have not received any help. My, my dear, the people, what they, they are crying is that whatever it is that has been provided, including what the member of parliament provided, is not enough. And it's true. They are not lying. It's not enough. So they need more resources to be mobilized to assist them. So let's say that things have been done, but more ought to be done under the circumstances to, to question our brothers and sisters. Because these are royals of the, of the land. These are people that we appreciate because they are citizens of the land. And they need to be protected at all times. They need to be cared for at all times. And government will try and do everything humanly possible to provide them the needed assistance at every point in time. But let's not create the impression that nothing has been done. I mean, if what the member of parliament did was enough, they wouldn't be calling for more resources from the government. If what the, uh, uh, the uh, district uh, NADMO did and the regional had done so far was enough, we wouldn't be asking for national to come through. If what the churches and other religious and other NGO 
that are part of operating within that enclave had equally done, if those were also enough, would it be needing more resources? That's how it is. We are one people. When events like this comes, what we do is that we, we put ourselves together and assist each other. Because okay. the, people, the point is that the, the, the tiger wave that came did not separate NDC from NDC, MPP. It did not know CPP members. It did not know whether you are from voter region or you are whatever. All the inhabitants of the area were affected. So what we ought to do as a people is to come together and provide solutions. And that's what government is doing. So let's not do politics with everything. I what mean, is what is the solution help. exactly? Because these people have said, and the convener spoke during, um, you know, the demonstration this week, that every time they have tried to embark on a demonstration, government speaks to them and assures them that something will be done to resolve the issue, and then they give up on the demonstration. And this time around, they decided to embark on it, regardless of what anybody from government said, because they are tired of the excuses and the broken promises. See, I, I, I would want to say that. As a country, we know that our major challenge is resource constraint. That's what I'm saying, that even when the NDC start initiated the project, they could not raise funding and did not pay a contractor even a dime. It took the MPP government to come and mobilize funding and pay, and did all those things. And the second phase, funding is being raised too for the second phase. Remember that the people have also received serious uh, 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 warning and also been advised to relocate from the area they are now. Currently. And go where? With what and, money, Richard? I mean, 2020, we also saw how COVID disrupted everything. But, I'm sorry, but this, 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 this advice did not come in because of COVID. It had been, been I they understand. Been told this even before, before 2017. Yes, true. I know the NDC as a government but, tried that, tried yeah. and advised the relocation. Fine, I know but that if, that if people had this, planned that they were going to relocate in 2020, COVID set in. Now, a lot of these people, again, are cross-border um, you know, uh, cross traders. And so they've lost their businesses. They've lost their livelihoods. Where are they going to move to? With what money? How are they going to survive? I, I, I agree with you with the economic situation that we are painting because of COVID and the impact of COVID on people's businesses. And I, I'm, I'm the, I'll be the last person to... Okay. Well, a, a bit of a technical challenge there. Richard Asante is uh, joining us via Zoom because he's not close by. And so maybe when that reconnects, we'll come back to it. But uh, he's saying that, I mean, naturally, one would say if you're blaming them, your government was in power for eight years. And so you should have been able to complete this project and not come and blame them for not doing it. Before the NDC came into power in 2019, President Kufo was in power with the MPP for eight years. And before mm -hmm. they also came, President Rollins was there for eight years. The point is that if you want to say that uh, we are not saying that all problems in this country can be solved within eight years mm. or within four years. But our point and the point I have made this morning emphatically is that when one government begins providing the solution or mm -hmm. begins solving the problem and another government comes, we ought to complete it. We started a sea defense project. So if we were in power from 2017, we would have completed by now. And it is not true that the NDC did not secure funding for that project. We did. And so we did the phase one, mm. and so they were supposed to continue with phase two. He's telling me that they are now looking for trying to source funds for all of that. Who starts building a story building? You build a first floor, and you wait for four or five years later to say that you are now continuing the project, and, and that means that you have not abandoned the project. You abandoned the project for four years, and that is the truth. In 2019, this thing happened. 2017, anytime it happens, your government will go, tell the people, make promises empty promises that you've never fulfilled. And that is why the people are demonstrating that you keep deceiving them, giving them all sorts of excuses. Mm. Again, talking about NADMO, NADMO has been unresponsive in this particular issue. You see, this government, this visionless government led by President Akufado. How are they, they visionless? Are, they, are, they, are so, they, are, they, are, they are so visionless and so populist that in 2020, when a disaster happened in a community in Lume called Katanga or something. Mm. They mobilized resources, huge resources from here with government officials crossed over the border to Lume, mm. claiming that Ghanaians were living in that community. Now, this government has abandoned the people of Agaveji for over a week, and he wants us to accept that. They have not have abandoned. They said they are on their way to provide constraints. relief. From a weak disaster, he says that what, the district, what is the, SS, no, the district Nadmo you, office, I am telling you, provided district, some relief. Bella, if the district Nadmo office 
had provided the relief to the people, do you think they would have been demonstrating, crying out for help? The truth is that the district offices of NADMO, as we speak, only exist to provide an administrative structure. They don't have the resources. So anything that happens, they only send a report to the national, to the headquarters. Mm. The headquarters responds with the relief items. They are now responding after a week. And the people are suffering. The people are crying. Pregnant women, children, babies, the aged, the sick. These people are homeless. They are crying for help. And you want us to accept that we have resource constraints. We don't have resource challenges in this country. What we have is that leadership does not know what to prioritize. We have resource constraints, but your president is flying jets, paying over 15,000 pounds an hour. That is enough to provide relief items for the people of Agaveji. We have resource constraints, but your president and your government is still importing V8 in the wake of COVID. Even people who served as ministers in the first term are still be giving new, brand new V8. So it is not a problem of resource constraint. It is a problem of a visionless leadership and people who are only in power to enrich themselves and are not sensitive to the plight of the people. The people are crying for help. And so when you are here, you want us to glorify the lackadaisical attitude of NADMO and pretend as though we have resource challenges and all of that. I mean, there is a, I find it ridiculous because this same NADMO that you want us to accept their delay as a reason for, I mean, reasons for not having been responding early because of challenge of resources. Mm. They moved to Togo in 2020. They crossed over the border to a, a community with all sorts of resources, claiming that they were going to provide relief items for the people. This same mm. NADMO. This same NADMO, if you go to their headquarters today, it's just a few meters away from here, right there after, uh, around the, the, behind the 37 military hospital area, the Nima area there. Go there and you see, they have the items, but they are just not sensitive to the plight of the people. What we are saying is that enough of the knee-jerk reactions to this problem. Solve the problem now by ensuring that you complete the sea defense project okay. so that next year we will not come back to your studios and have this conversation again. Okay. The people of Agaveji and Ketu South are suffering. Again, you have opened, the, you have opened business in most of the places because of COVID. You've closed the borders. Mm. And these people survive on their trade across the borders. What is, what is delaying the opening of the borders? Still, there's no reason. The people have been crying, open the borders. You are not opening it for them to do business, to get some small income to feed themselves and their families. And, and yet, there's a disaster, and you are still responding with this lackadaisical attitude. I think that this government is so insensitive, and they are visionless. They, they, they quite, really quite, do not care about the plight of these people. Quite serious words to use against the, the government. Today. That is their actions. That their actions is, in fact, I am supposed to use stronger words. Are you words. not being unfair? Unfair? The government? How? Have, have, they, have they been fair to the people of Agaveji? Mm. Richard, when are we resuming this Blekusu Coastal project? Because at this point, it's an emergency and we need to resume as soon as I, possible. I, I, I do not want you to buy the idea that the government suspended the project and it needs to be resumed. The first phase has been completed and it okay. has been paid for by this government. Okay. The second phase is what is yet to, in, to, to be started. And so the they, are, they have to resume. I mean, I hear, my, uh, Bella, I'm, uh, a minute. I hear my brother talk about uh, uh, a government people are using. I didn't know that during the NDC time, President Mahama and the MPs of the NDC and the, and the ministers were using Abuboya in for the operations. Mm -hmm. I, I'm yet to find that happening. I didn't know that. That they, all of a sudden, MPP brought in uh, uh, these cars to come and do what? I mean, this is the government that came in for the first um, years of its term, said that no government institution should import a car. A major embargo was placed. Government, which government had done that? Government is sensitive to the price of the people. We talked about the president um, uh, operating and, and traveling with a, 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 an aircraft that cost 15000 That's not even true in terms of even the numbers. That's but let's remember true. that Mr. Mahama was... Now, Mr. Mahama was was flying with 77,000 uh, 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 an hour uh, 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 jet. Richard, that's well Richard, but has not are become you saying issue it's not true? These allegations that uh, were uh, made uh, by Anabo uh, Fujito. Are you allow saying me, it's not if true? You minute, if you allow me a minute, I'll okay. come in. And I told you that, that I will not want to take the win out of the seal of the, uh, the Minister of Defense and the Minister of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs who will be going to Parliament to address this issue. But I'm saying that when they approach Parliament, all the needed facts and information will be made available to good people of this country. But, but you said it's not true. That's why I'm trying to of get course. it. Of course, because I know it. 
But you see, it is not my business to put it out there. But I'm saying that the moment will come for this thing to be addressed by the relevant state institutions. And I think that we can wait for that. The second point is that this business about doing politics with everything, it is not good. I've already told you that the NADMO as an institution, the district NADMO had gone there and they parted ways with their limited resources they have at their disposal. They will not have because they did not know that the, the tiger wave did not call them on phone that they're happening on this particular day. So increase the amount of stock. So they are all allowed to keep minimal amount of but, resources to okay. solve when situation comes in. Richard. So the minimal they had, they, they've thrown into it to solve the problem at what capacity it can, deal, it can be dealt with. Richard, and this happened two months ago in April. And so not much should have known that something of this sort could happen any time again. I'm saying that I'm saying that this happened uh, less than a week ago. It happened less than a week ago, and I'm okay. saying that effort has been made. There's still effort. Need, something needs to be done extra to support the people. So let's not create impression that we, we care about certain parts of the people and certain individuals are not being cared for. Those okay. things does not help the country. Okay. All right. Let Johnny right read. To say that we need to we need to speed up things that have been done. It is right to call for those things. It is right to say that we want state institutions to be prudent. It is right to call for all those things. But it does not make sense to any Ghanaian for you to create the impression that people do not care about certain mm. group of people. And I don't know what reason for which my brother will be making such uh, uh, allegations. Okay, when for are me, we starting the next phase of the Black Kusuko Star project? I want to know, Richard. I, I think I think I think the uh, the uh, Minister of Western Housing has spoken about that, and he said that the Finance Ministry is putting to, putting together financing for the uh, for the project. You, 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 for a project to be successful and be completed, you need to have a financing ready. That's some of the things that NDC did that drag the country and some of the, several of the projects behind and they create because of the things they cut the show because of elections. 2016, uh, 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 a week or two to elections, they're cutting short. There's mm. no funding meant for all those projects. And when a new government comes in, it was all NDC government started with nothing. Okay. MPP came in, looked for the funding, completed the first phase of the project. Second phase is to be started uh, soon. And that is what ought to be known by Ghanaians. Not this idea of wanting to try to run down government, calling people insensitive, and running in such and insinuations on government officials and the government. Those things mm. doesn't really work. Okay. Let him know that and he is not using a boboya. So he do not expect people to use a boboya for the operation. And well, we for the expect government. all of you to sacrifice regardless. And so what's the point in having government officials sit in a V8 when there are people who are losing their livelihoods and losing their homes? Can you equally not sacrifice see, some see, of the money see, being I, spent I agree, I agree on that. extravagant spending? I, 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 let, I, let I, 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 do not, I do not share in government won't be involving itself in profligacy. I mm. do not share in uh, government officials living in pomp and pageantry while the people who are low in abject poverty. I do not share in those beliefs. Mm. Because the responsibility of government officials and Nanado Danko Akufuado, as she has said, time with that number, is to come and serve and help the people. You remember that at every point in time, the concept of this government has been solving and reducing the hardship of the Ghanaian. And that has been our, 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 our duty, and that's what we've been doing. Okay. So that is what we've been doing as a people. That is why we are seeing all kinds of things to be done to reduce hardships. That is why when COVID came in, we were talking about COVID, but it is forgotten that in the midst of COVID, people were giving free water, people were giving free electricity. And they are paying back for it now. They are paying back for it now. So it was not free, MBSSI. Richard. It was MBSSI. not free. MBSSI. Ghanians are paying back pay for, for the free any, water, the anything. free electricity, and all of that. So it's not free. So it let's not make it look no, like no, it was given to Ghanians for free. You are paying for it. It's a lie. Anything okay. you, you are paying for is what you're using now. Well, well you the information for, minister said it himself that I'm he has that they have provided that, it. That, those, that communication was twisted. And he has explained time with that number. That okay. whatever it is, if, if, if government tells you that it's giving you free water, All right. know that there's... All right, let, let's just read messages, uh, Johnny. <laughs> let's read messages. You know, I, I followed up on this matter, this uh, Blekusu Agaveja mm. Mutinu Adina mm. matter. It is not correct to suggest that the district NADMO had supplies and they are taking it there. It is not correct mm. because I noticed around there, they actually said they didn't have supplies and that even the national NADMO had not received a penny mm. from whatever was approved for them in the budget. And that the agreement is that when you make the demand, 
then the supplies come to mm -hmm. you, which is what is causing the delay, the delay in giving them supplies. the supplies today. I am mm. happy that better late than never mm -hmm. because it happened last week Wednesday. Mm. It's been more than a week. Yeah. So I'm happy that, you know, re re uh, reliefs are going to them today. But it is not a good thing to suggest that for what more than one week, the people are getting it. That's not correct. Hmm. Number two, there's more than 10 kilometers of the stretch of the sea defense wall mm. that has to be completed because the Togolese are done with theirs. With theirs so exactly. the pressure will be bouncing off ours. Mm -hmm. And this is not a time to do politicking. For me, I believe that the livelihoods of the people, their homes are being eaten away, mm -hmm. electric poles with live wire in the sea, that's not a good thing. The road is about 30 meters away from the streets. Yeah. Uh, it, you're dividing the road, nearly truncating it. That connects the two communities. It's, it's not a good thing. Mm. So the politicization, I won't buy it. And end. we'll have an extended conversation on 3FM 92.7 at 9 a.m. this morning. Yeah. We'll talk to all the people. Our men are out there. We'll connect with them. But your message is the government has refused to cut down on its expenditure or account in detail for how COVID-19 funds were spent and yet want to strangle citizens with taxes. Shameless mismanagement of our economy on display. All arms of government must start paying for their own utilities fuel, among other things. Osman Bukuri Song in Tamale. Prince Henry in Kofridia says, Good morning, Bella. It's very disheartening and pathetic that till now Nadmo has not responded adequately to the people of Ketu South citizens last week when tidal waves eruption display, displaced the people. Are the people of Ketu South not part of Ghana? Don't they pay taxes to Ghana? Why are their case different from other Ghanaians when they happen to them? What is the state of the Keta Sea Defense Project? The government told us since 2018 they are constructing. My regards to Mago, Fifi Kwete, and Elikem Kotoko. Her Eric ha uh, Hakuna Matata in Kufridia says, the political life of Sir John taught me one thing, to live in harmony with your political opponents. His jokes with General Mosquito on radio alone reduced tension in the party supporters when MPP was in opposition. May his gentle soul continue to rest in peace. Good morning, Bella and the entire team. It's very bad seeing people not adhering to the COVID-19 uh, protocols at Sir John's funeral. Nana and his government must wake up and stop acting as if there are different, they are different rules when it comes to COVID because no one is above the law. Uh, and uh, and um, Sibyl Maxwell from WA, and yet we're looking for the Christ Embassy people to put in jail, right? Good morning, Bella. I am a pharmacy technologist. My seniors, colleagues, and juniors are uncountable, sitting without employment all over the country. MCAs are preferred to, or the, that's medicines counter assistants, are preferred to us who have HND with technical know-how. We wrote to the Pharmacy Council, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Labor Relations, even before the 2020 elections as concerned, Unemployed Pharmacy Technologies Association of Ghana. And the response was that they have written to the Ministry of Finance. Up until now, nothing good has come out of it. We made a, a follow-up recently, and they claim to have forgotten of our letter. Just yesterday, another clearance has been issued for nurse clinicals and preventative. What wrong have we done studying pharmacy technology or Ghana? It appears without demonstration you will never get what you want. Your hashtag recognize farm, uh, farm tech now. Okay, good morning, Bella. The NDC should be the last group to complain about tidal waves in Ketu South, their World Bank. The phenomenon started far back, and NDC has had more opportunities to address the problem than anyone else. They should be ashamed for leaving their vote basket go through this mess. Uh, good morning, indeed. Man came from the soil and shall return into the soil. Uh, Honorable Sir John, rest in peace. Condolences to all family and friends. And this is from Master Planner Junior in Kintan. Paul, let me say a quick happy birthday to my big sister, Harriet Hughes. Tomorrow is your birthday. Happy birthday, sweetie. We love you and live long. Yeah. Thank you, Bella. Thank you so much, Johnny. And this one says, good morning. That's from Nanaya. Government should take off 1 million uh, of the 522 million Ghana cities meant for the so-called census to solve the problem at K2 South. Priorities, priorities, priorities in capital letters. Who? Uh, good morning. And uh, oh, well, yeah, that message is for later. Thank you so much, Nanaya, for your your message. Another one also from um, Prince Henry from Kofodia. He says, good morning, Bella. It's very disheartening and pathetic that till now Nadmo has not responded adequately to the people of K2 South uh, since last week. Well, they're on their way to the community this morning. He says, are the people of K2 South not part of Ghana? Don't they pay taxes to Ghana? Why are their cases different from other Ghanaians when it happens to them? What is the state of the Keta Sea Defense Project the government told us about since 2018 uh, that they are constructing? Uh, my regards to Mago Fifi Kwete and Elikem Kotoko. Thank you so much for your message this morning. Good morning to Vicky as well. We'll continue our conversation about this conversation we're having on TV uh, on what's our final words. And then my time is up, unfortunately. We'll have to go. Yeah, well, I think that the essence of 
these conversations is for us to find a solution. Mm. Um, after all is said and done, the people of Keto South are suffering. Government should open the borders and should respond immediately to their plans, especially the people of Agaveji, mm. so that uh, let's construct the sea defense and prevent the future occurrence of these problems. Definitely. Richard, final words as well. I, I think that moments like this call for us to unite as a people to deal with the problems that confront our people. Because mm. natural events will come anyway, regardless of what you do, either through tiger waves and through a strange storm and all that. But when such moments come, let's unite and deal with the issues and stop the politicians. It's so petty to hear some of the politicians that we do when it comes to these issues. Because like one of your testers said, I mean, if it comes to addressing the issues of this country, NDC had have far more time to be in government and their NDC and their antecedent to have mm. dealt with some of the issues that confront the problem. But you realize that when MPP comes, we deal with issues with dispatch. We, when we came in, we've done it, it far in essence of what the NDC has done in terms of providing sea defense across That's the country. Is, is that we really more true, rules Richard? Than, in terms of than the NDC, all this regard. Ghanaians are so, agitated. I mean, they are saying fix the country. Unfortunately, my time is up. I'm sorry I have to cut into your, so we'll, we'll uh, your speech. Yes, we'll continue this. Much later, we will. Richard Asante, uh, your boy is government spokesperson on infrastructure. And also Eric Edem Agbana is a deputy national youth organizer of the NDC. This is still TV3 New Day. And later, we want to have a conversation with you. So we'll ask you to call in and share with us what you make of the 13% increase in transport fares. Um, is it too much, too little? What do you say? Sports, entertainment, and of course, uh, some conversation with Johnny Hughes coming up. Keep watching.